Hello guys of United Rock Nations. We are in an amazing company with Brian of Diamond Head. How are you? I'm well. I'm well. I'm here in France, so that's good. The Hellfest. Yeah, Hellfest. One of the biggest in the world. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. We've never done it before. So it's the first time this afternoon. We're on about 10 to 5 and we've got 50 minutes set. we're really looking forward to it fantastic we will be there to see you right we've yeah. been looking forward to it for months <laughs> great uh, first question about your career uh, when you released uh, your first record yeah. lightning to the nations in 1980 did, did you thought that you you will be there four years 40 years yeah. after and playing music well who still knows uh, what's around the bend you know who knows what's going to happen next year uh, i have no idea that that I would, I would have a career that lasted 40 years. I always used to think the bands were either big or would disappear. You know, if you didn't make it, that seemed to be the goal. You try and get signed, you try and become a big band. Yes. Or you would just disappear. Uh, I didn't think you could sort of find a middle ground and have a career as a musician where you can, you know, make a living. You wouldn't necessarily be a millionaire, of course, uh, but you also wouldn't have to, like, get a, go back to having a day job. So uh, it, that was a real eye-opener to me to be able to continue to play guitar and write songs and make records for 40 years. I didn't expect it. <laughs> and the last album is a very great album. It seems that it's, it's like the first days. So Yeah, it's great. Yeah, we're really, really pleased and really pleased with the reaction from everybody so far. Absolutely. So yeah, it's all going well at the moment. Um, in January 1980, mm -hmm. in Southampton, UK, uh -huh. you were the super band of ACDC. That's right. How is the feeling at this time with playing with ACDC? Yeah, no, I mean, the weird thing was that it, it was the last two ever gigs that Bon Scott played yes. we did Newcastle and Southampton. And, and then about maybe a month later, he, he died, didn't he? Oh. So that was really weird. Um, but at the time, we were just huge fans of ACDC. I'd seen them a couple of times already on the Let There Be Rock tour, Power Age tour, and then Highway to Hell. Uh, and then we got offered a couple of dates at, right at the end of Highway to Hell. And it was fantastic. You know, we obviously met the band. Both gigs were sold out. Uh, we had a big sound check, a really <laughs> nice to us. Um, I remember they didn't sound check, they just got the road crew just went through, you know, played the guitar yeah, yeah, yeah. and did the drums. But they didn't sound check, uh, so it left a lot of time for us to sound check. And, uh, it, it was a, we went down really well, and we thought if we can go down well in front of 3,000 ACDC fans, then we must have some to them. You know, it gave us a massive boost of confidence. We'd probably only done about 30 gigs up to this point, and suddenly we're on the stage in front of 3,000 people and it was fantastic so we all come away thinking we could conquer the world probably. <laughs> it's a real lift. Uh, there is two break uh, of the band in 1985, the second one in 90, uh, 1994. Um, tell us more about why those two breaks and the story of Diamond Head. Um, it's just bands are hard to keep together. A lot of bands disappear and a lot of bands fall, fall apart. It's hard to keep everybody happy in a band where, you know, I mean, if you're making really good money, that might be an incentive. But if you're just kind of, you know, making some money and it's just, it becomes hard work and you may not have, I mean, Diamond Head got dropped by our record label in 1980. Four. Yes. So we, we couldn't afford to do an album after that. It's not like now you can do your album cheaply now. We, we make our albums now much, much cheaper than we did in the 80s. Absolutely. When you'd have to hire a big multi track studio in London or something. Uh, you can do it at home virtually. Um, so uh, it's just just trying to keep the band together really people go off and want to do different things you know that bass player left and they, they, you know it just it happens you know you bring in more guys and they disappear you know if it's not exactly right if you haven't got the right management the right label the right agency Absolutely, if yes. you're working continue if you're not working continue they'll drift off and join other bands it's just really hard to keep a band together I mean this lineup now is very stable very strong exactly, yes. but you always worry that somebody's going to leave or get poached or do something it's, it's hard it's hard and uh, why uh, how was your motivation when you come back the last break after the last break um uh, how was it well i think it was just kind of daft not to do diamond head um we reformed in 2000 and we've been going ever since uh and it's just kind of been building 
we, we never had professional management until just recently and now we're with a new label called Silver Lining so we've had some rough patches where we're playing you know pubs and clubs and yes. self-financing everything oh. uh, but we've sort of kept the faith we always had the belief in the band and the name and the the, uh, the material uh, I still love playing Diamond songs even though they're, some of them are 40 yes. years old uh, and they still go down well if people still want to hear them and still come and see the band then fantastic you know I, I it's my thing isn't it it's my band yeah, it's yeah, my yeah. baby kind of thing <laughs> I, uh, I try and protect it and fantastic. hopefully keep it going um, we have a first we have a lot of personal questions right the first one is the first rock album you bought okay uh, uh, let's open what, 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 what album Led Zeppelin 2. The 2? Yeah. Yes. With Hollow Hollow mm -hmm. one. It's the first one you first bought album I ever in bought. vinyl? Vinyl, of course. Yes. Well, I bought it in probably 1974, something like that, when yeah. I was about 14, 13, 14. And how was your impression when you listened I to it? I love it. I, I still love it now. Oh. It's a great album. It's got some brilliant songs on it, brilliant riffs. Uh, and, uh, the second album I bought was Machine Head by Deep Purple. Deep Purple, yes. So I started well there. Little did I know that I, I, I went off on two. You know, started off on two classic rock albums, Absolutely. and and that pretty much inspired me to want to play guitar. I mean, my older brother Dave played guitar; he's six years older than me, and so there was a guitar around the house. But once I heard Blackmore, I yes. thought I wouldn't mind being able to play I West Star. You know, and it kind of influenced me or inspired me to practice. Up until then, I probably had a dabble, I didn't have a yes, go. Yes, yes. But once I heard Blackmore, oh, okay, I'm gonna have to practice. <laughs> that, 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 that was my second question. Uh, which album make, uh, made you want to make music? Well, yeah, it's Richard Blackmore, I, I, it's the probably, purple, probably Blackmore, and, and yeah, I mean, I was a big fan of all the 70s bands. I think that's the, my favorite decade for yes, music. Yes, you know, Zep, Sabbath, Purple, yeah. UFO, UFO, yeah, DC, Michael Schenker, yes. um, Queen. There's so many brilliant bands in the 70s. Absolutely. Judas Priest. And so I just sort of wanted to do the more of the same, you know. I liked the punk rock scene oh, that happened yes. in 77. The Clash, Six Pistols. Uh, yeah, I would listen to the John Peel show and yes. I would tape stuff off the radio. Yes, absolutely. I just thought it was very exciting. And yes, very, absolutely. You know, I kind of wanted to be in a band that had a lot of energy and had some, some kick. I didn't want to be in a, a band where it was progressive and slow. Mm, and yes, like Genesis, it. yes. I uh, like Genesis and yes, but I, I probably wasn't technically in provision to be able to play the Steve. Uh, for example, but I thought I could play like Steve Jones. <laughs> Give me, you know, let me get on stage right now. But uh, I would probably aspire to play like Blackmore, but I couldn't. But uh, a lot of energy I, I took from punk. And, and when we when we play live in the early days, you haven't got a record out, so you're trying to impress a crowd of never don't know any of your material. Exactly. And so fast, exciting songs seem to be the way forward. But. Uh, the album that you listen the most on your life? Uh, I've listened to Physical Graffiti a lot. Oh, that's my favorite album. Yes. And I love Dark Side of the Moon. I've listened to that a lot. I oh, like this it, it is progressive. Yeah, no, but it just sounds amazing. <laughs> it's just a work of art. It's a beautifully crafted yeah. album. Exactly. Start to finish. All the tracks flow into each other. And oh, man. Dark Side of the Moon is just magic. Um, I've listened to, you know, I like U2, ACDC, um, U2? The Beatles, yeah, I love it, U2. It's not the same Sounds kind of great. music. No, I mean, I don't, I don't mind sound like U2, but I'll just like, I, I, I mean, it's a great singer, Bonner, and so I, I'm always listening for a great singer. Yes. So um, I, I, I got into U2 in the 80s, and uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of good albums. I'm still a big fan. Still a Yeah, yeah. brilliant. So I'm not, I don't listen to a lot of metal. I hear, I mean, I hear it a lot when I'm. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's, it's, it seems to be everywhere in my <laughs> job. But uh, a lot of times to relax, I, would, I wouldn't want to listen to Slayer or something. What is it for you the most beautiful artwork? artwork. The most beautiful artwork. Mm. I like. Um, I like Judas Priest's sec second, second album, third album, uh, second album. Sin um, Sad Rings of Destiny with that angel on. Yes. I think that's a classic album cover. Um, I like Rainbow Rising, the Rainbow Rising and the first yes. Rainbow album with that castle, yes, like a guitar. Yes. Uh, uh, Zeppelin, um, 
Uh, I liked Houses of the Holy. Houses of the Holy, yes. Mm -hmm. And the one of Damon Head? The Diamond Head. I like the new one with the, yes, co the coffee train. Coffee train yes. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. The guy in, in San Francisco designed it. We sent him some images that we like. Once we chose the title, the coffee train, we sent him images. Uh, we did some drawings. We did took some pictures off the net. And we knew it was going to be a train. And he went and took pictures of old trains and, and built that cover and sent, sent it back and forwards on the internet. So we've never met the guy, Travis. Oh, you never met, never him. met him. But he did a brilliant job. I love the cover. It's a, it's a great yeah, it's great. Um, there is an album which you would not have um, wanted to play. Sorry? Uh, is it uh, an album that you don't like on Diamond Head Disco? Oh, no, I like them all. I mean, I have favourites, but yeah, we've only done eight studio albums, so, so yeah, they're, they're all my babies, I like them, I like yeah. them all. All the albums? Yeah, they're all good. Without distinction between the one or oh, the well, other one? Well, you know, I'd probably like some of them, better than others. Yeah. 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 Yes. But there's nothing that I don't like, although I won't listen to. Yeah. 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 Yeah.